Recording in progress. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Trustee Bill Lewis, so you read the land as well. The Pacifica School District acknowledges that we gather on the unceded ancestral homelands of the Ramatouche Ohlone people. As guests, we humbly extend our gratitude to the Ramatouche Ohlone elders and community. We recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland, and we affirm their sovereign rights as First Peoples. As the original stewards of this land, the Ramatouche Ohlone understand the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of maintaining harmony with nature. Likewise, Pacifica School District commits to teaching our school community how to be responsible stewards of this land. The district digitally records the audio portion of the meeting. All recordings are kept in the superintendent's office for 30 days and are available during the time period for inspection by members of the public on district equipment without charge. In-person speakers wishing to address the board on agenda or non-agenda items, please complete a request card. I didn't with... get that. Could you try again? Uh, please. <laughs> Re complete a request card with your name, address, and the item number and submit it to the board president or the superintendent. You'll be called to address the board and may speak for up to three minutes. Virtual speakers wishing to address the board on agenda items or non-agenda items, please submit your first and last name and agenda item you wish to speak on in the Q&A area, Q &A area, area of, the of the web. web. Uh, please, please do not submit comments, comments or questions, questions in the Q&A area. area. You'll be called to address the board. Your microphone will be unmuted and you may speak for up to three minutes. After you've spoken, your microphone will be muted. Barbara, would you please take the roll call? Yes. Trustee Bredal? Here. Trustee Bertini? Here. Trustee Doggett is absent. Trustee Patel? Here. Trustee Villalobos? Here. Thank you. The board met in closed session regarding conference with legal uh, counsel anticipated litigation. Significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9D2, one potential case. The board voted three with one abstaining um, to approve this, um, this item. So, it's up. Um, B, or next one, matter regarding individual student pursuant to educa Education Code 48912B. The, the board voted 4-0 to approve. Um, public employee performance evaluation, uh, no vote. Um, are there any uh, questions regarding the minutes of the meeting, um, uh, March 30th, regarding our regular board of trustees meeting? No questions. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 30th, 2022, regular board of trustees meeting? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 30th, 2022. I'll second. Okay, second. Uh, Barbara, will you please take the vote? Uh, sure. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 4-0. Thank you. <coughs> Approval of the agenda and consent agenda. Um, all items on the consent agenda will be approved with one motion, which is non -de not debatable and which requires a unanimous vote for passage. If any member of the board, the superintendent, or the public so request, any item may be sh shall be removed from this section and placed in the regular order of business following approval of the consent agenda. Are there any questions regarding the agenda or consent agenda? Okay, none. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda or consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda and consent agenda. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Motion passes 4-0. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, will you take a vote? Uh, yes, all in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 4-0. Um, let's see. Just, um, okay, it's uh, recommended that the board approve the agenda for April 27th, regular meeting. Um, 
consideration exception to warrants? Uh, so do I need to check that here? No, so the application. The, the approvals uh, for that. So number nine, please take this. And Rachel Merlot will speak on behalf of LSU. Jump to page two. So communications from LSEA. A little bit louder. Can you turn that up? <clears throat> the end of the year is approaching quickly. Teachers have been working all year to seamlessly transition students back into the classroom, work on curriculum, and meet their students' social and emotional needs. This has been a lot in the midst of the pandemic, but our teachers have done this job exceptionally well. In these final weeks of school, teachers are quite tired and stressed out. Most of our sites are going to need to be packed up within a very short period of time after the final bell rings for the school year. Just please be mindful of the added stress this is for many and the importance of clear communication needed to staff to help ease their worries. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Comment. Hello? Hello? Okay, good. I'm using my husband's Apple and my Chromebook, so I think we're good tonight. Okay, you ready? Hello, my name is Nicole Sayers and I am the president of CSEA. I would like to start off by congratulating Gia Ramsey and Janine Castaneda for being the March recipients of the CSEA Above and Beyond Award. Gia has worked tirelessly with our behavioral students and always goes above and beyond. She is a joy to work with and we are lucky to have her. Anyone who knows Janine knows she's a gem. Her work at Sunset Ridge keeps things running like a well-oiled machine. She greets visitors with a smile and is always going the extra mile. I enjoy working with her on our uh, negotiation team and I enjoy seeing her every time I go to Sunset Ridge. I am not sure how Sunset Ridge got so lucky, but I know they appreciate that all that Gia and Janine do for their school. I also want to remind you that chapter 128 is made up of approximately 140 individuals who do different types of jobs. Many of these jobs do not require expertise in technology. The district has expressed an interest in teaching technology skills to our members. CSE is happy to have our members become proficient in technology. However, many of our members are not provided with district professional development days, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, let alone uh, technology training. Since we are not all proficient in technology and in some cases do not need technology to complete our job, CSEA sees a problem with the district no longer accepting paper applications for employment opportunities. We currently have job opportunities in and child nutrition, custodial, paraprofessionals, behavior, OT, LVN, and crossing guards. At least five of those positions do not require a lot of technological, technological knowledge. People who may want to apply for these positions need to understand that they need to have access to a computer, they need to go to EdJoin, they need to create an account. They need to enter Pacifica School District into the search bar, then scan through the opening positions, then go to application, fill it out, and make sure it is submitted correctly. It's like seven steps to apply for a position. Potential employees who may be interested in custodial, paraprofessional, and child nutrition may not have the computer skills they need to find and apply to these jobs. In a district that struggles to pay higher wages, it does not seem reasonable to make the application process this hard for classified employees. Today, I mentioned to the paraprofessionals that I work with 
that if they would like to apply for summer ESY, ESY work, they would need to get online and apply today. No one was interested in applying. In years past, I would simply carry copies of the supplemental application. We would fill it out and then I'd throw them all into an envelope and send it by pony to the district office. We need to hire qualified applicants. Qualified applicants don't necessarily need to be educated in technology to do their jobs well. They need to know how to work in kitchens, how to clean campuses, and how to support student learning and be able to cross students and parents safely across a street. This technology expectation disqualifies individuals who may be valued employees because they don't know how to apply for the job. This is unfair. It's an unfair expectation and it feels a little discriminatory. A few years ago, I sp uh, I'm sorry, a few months ago, I spoke to you about putting a kiosk or computer station at the district office for future employees and parents to use if they did not have access to a computer a place where people could see the openings and get assistance to apply, a place where parents could access the district website. CSEA, CSEA would like to see this sort of inclusion be a part of the district office because it continues the feeling of what we love about Pacifica, which is the inclusion in our community. CSEA loves that the district is, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> that was wrong. CSEA believes that the district is moving too fast with their desire to move towards a full technology district. And we are leaving strong classified candidates out. Thank you for your time. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Great. Great. Thank, Thank you me. very much for the opportunity. First, I just want to say we have the Elna Flynn Banquet coming up. We're really excited to celebrate this. It'll be May 20th, and I think a lot of you um, will be in attendance. So it's a wonderful event where we really show our support and gratitude towards um, amazing school volunteers for each of our schools. So we're excited for that. Um, as you know, something I'm very passionate about is the state of our fields and tracks, these outdoor classrooms that really need a lot of help. Um, we acknowledge there's funding and personnel shortages, but we're, we're having a hard time getting the community to be able to step up when the school district hasn't been able to really change the narrative and meet at the most basic level. We know there's uh, some personnel losses recently, um, and so some of the services have been outsourced. There doesn't seem to be oversight to make sure that that's happening. So it's great to hire a company, but if we don't manage them, you're just sort of wasting that money. And I, I do want to make sure that we're able to tackle sprinkler systems as well. So that's a big part of making sure these fields are going to be healthy for all of our um, all of our outdoor classroom efforts. And I can tell you that as of last Friday, I dropped off my daughter at Odstead and a sprinkler was going off. One of the lines, seven sprinklers was going off. So I, I alerted a couple of folks within the school district, like, I don't know what's going on. What can I do to help? Um, and it took a full 24 hours of pretty much these seven sprinklers running full force um, before uh, we were able to get someone out there to turn them off. So what an incredible waste of resources. Um, it swamped this field that's being rented for a wonderful tournament that we're hosting. The local soccer organization is going to host this weekend. And unfortunately, every single day, I continue to get updates from neighbors, from people who live in the area, just like Michelle, what's happening at Odstead? The sprinklers are still going off. So I don't know what I can do to try and help move things forward. Um, we need to really shift um, the way things are being done because it's not, it's not moving in the right direction. We have a great opportunity. We have an incredibly generous community. And I do think there's still opportunity for us to be able to partner. But if we can't somehow meet the basic needs of these fields and allow the community organizations to take that leap of faith that influx of money, um, we're not going to get anywhere. And so I'd love to hear um, how we're going to change things up a little bit so that we can support 
that redirection of the narrative so that we can support these community efforts and we can get these fields in better shape um, for our community, for our schools to use. You know, we've sort of lost this year. So what can we do over the next couple of months for um, uh, August start of the next school year? I am open to questions. I would love to reach out and have some dialogue, brainstorming sessions. Um, let's, let, let me hear what you all can do to help change this. Uh, otherwise, it's just gonna be the same conversation over and over. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great rest of the evening. I hope to talk with you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else uh, wishing to address the board? Not what I see. Okay. Um, correspondence. Uh, I have received a very number of emails about uh, both the uh, potential closure of the Boys and Girls Club as well as Je uh, the Jefferson Union High School District calendar. Um, so, any communications from the board? Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, I also received several communications about the Boys and Girls Club um, possible closure. And I, I just do want to comment personally on um, the Boys and Girls Club has been a great service to our youth. And four of my kids went to the Boys and Girls Club and they all signed the petition that's going around, uh, as well as I did, because there was one day when I had all four kids in the car with me and the dog in the meantime, and I had all kinds of groceries, and I ran out of gas while I was going to pick up the kids from the Boys and Girls Club. And the director put me, all the kids, the dog, and my groceries in her van and drove me home. And so I think this is just the spirit of the Boys and Girls Club, and I hope that you know it remains open, however that may be. Um, I also received um, correspondence about the calendar change with Jefferson um, Union High School District. And, you know, for years we've been trying to be in sync with them. And I thought we were on a great path, but then they changed it um, at the last minute. And so I do understand um, some of the parents' discontent with that. Uh, I went to the joint articulation meeting, and this is a meeting where the city comes together, the water department, um, Jefferson Union High School District, and Pacifica School District. And I'm going to be quite frank. I would say like five years ago, we didn't have a whole lot going on anywhere, but now, you know, I'm recovering from the pandemic and moving into different stages. The meeting was uh, very fruitful, a lot of information from everybody. And so I, I was really happy to see that. Um, I stopped by the workforce housing event. Uh, I can't remember what day that was. Um, I attended the superintendent chat over Zoom. And I have to say, you know, out of the pandemic, I really enjoyed Zoom with some things because it just so happened, you know, I was running behind on some things, so I ended up, you know, getting into the Zoom from the parking lot in Ceremony. <laughs> I could still listen to what was going on. Um, oh, and then, you know, through um, California School Board Associations and other channels, one of the really exciting things that's happening in Indian country right now is that uh, the UCs in California are allowing um, American Indian students to go to their colleges for free. And the one qualification is you must be an enrolled member of a federally recognized tribe. And so the reasoning was because of the past, you know, how things turned out. And you know, we could get into all that, but we really don't need to. Um, the American Indian population in California is around 1%. So I think that basically says it all. Um, but 
personally, uh, you know, we were just overjoyed because I have a one child who's a senior in college right now, and so she'll be able to come back home and get her graduate degree at one of the UCs now That's great. and live at home. And then, you know, my other daughter, too, her program, the best program is down in Irvine, so she'll be able to do the UC Irvine program. So I think it's just really a great step towards our education. Mm -hmm. I have uh, five things. Hopefully, I remember them. Uh, they're very, very quick. Uh, I also received communications about the Boys and Girls Club, um, as well as the calendar change. Uh, I did show up very briefly at the workforce housing event. Uh, my children got wet, and so I had to leave. Um, and uh, and then uh, I met with Heather to talk about um, uh, some goals on April 8th, I believe. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention is I listened in on a call. Um, it was, I think it was FICMAT and one other um, school-related agency, and it was just an open call. But it was in response to some of the articles that were coming around around California having lower enrollment in general in, in public schools. This is the first year that it's dipped below six, six million. Six million. Um, and, you know, the, the interesting thing is, we don't, know, we don't know where they're going because uh, charter school enrollment is down, private school enrollment is slightly up, but doesn't make up the difference. Uh, and I think that, I mean, obviously it's families moving, but I think the, the bigger kind of issue that I think is important as we think through all of the agenda items is the pressure on the finances that will continue going forward with declining enrollment. Now, there are some things at the state legislature around potentially funding by enrollment versus ADA, which could help, but um, as just an underpinning, I thought it was worthy of all of us recognizing that financial pressures are going to increase um, for California districts. On that note, uh, tomorrow uh, we'll be sending out to uh, uh, families uh, an intent to enroll, just verifying their enrollment for next year, uh, because last year we were uh, wrong by about 200 students, which means that we were overstaffed for the number of students. So we hope to be able to verify people's enrollment within about a week and have the schools help follow up in terms of that. Very important in terms of the number of students that we expect. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, I participated in the workforce housing uh, open houses at Allstadt. We had three of them, one for uh, teachers and staff, and two for the community members, and they were pretty well attended, and the overall um, positive response, I think, from, from both communities. I uh, attended the monthly music meeting. Uh, there was a home for all meeting with San Mateo County uh, Housing Committee that's still on Zoom. Uh, Earth Day was uh, real enjoyable. They kept um, the EcoFest down to just speakers and televised it on Channel 26. Um, but they had, this year was the Mission Blue Butterfly, and they supplied uh, all of our schools and teachers with lesson plans on, on the Mission Blue and how to help, how to help that um, with planting different flowers and so forth in the gardens to keep the Mission Blue around. And then Sunday was um, an event at the Moose Lodge for Pacificans um, for Ukraine, which was a fundraiser that was a lot of our students, uh, especially from the Green Room, music and they had the bands there, they had a bake sale, they had a craft sale, um, all kinds of things going on to try to raise money for Ukraine and I'm really interested to see see how they did and uh, it was a lot of our school community there. Um, I attended a lot of the same meetings that my peers did. I also got a lot of letters around Boys and Girls Club and the uh, Jefferson the uh, difference between our calendars and Jefferson Unified High School District. I also attended uh, my first strike articulation meeting, and I actually I also agree it was a really good just to connect with people across the city and just hear how everyone's doing. I went to, uh, I think my highlight was going to open house at Valimar. Uh, it was the first in-person open house in two years, and it was just really great to see everybody back. Uh, and back on campus and smiles and 
just, you know, it was just nice. It just felt like we were, we were moving forward. So um, I had my monthly meeting with Dr. Olson, and, and that's it for me. Uh, I have uh, three things that are not the things that you hold on, uh, but uh, I met with YMCA today to think about who might be able, should, uh, Boys and Girls Club leave us, who might fill that hole at, uh, at uh, Ingrid B. Lacey. So that was one important one. The, uh, kind of the takeaway from that is that the startup time would be very, very slow, would be much slower than uh, potentially Boys and Girls Club could be leaving in August. And so I think, we, you know, that uh, would be very disruptive to Ingrid B. Lacey. Um, the other is uh, I, I did meet with Boys and Girls Club about running the afternoon portion of our summer program. I need to follow up with them to uh, make sure that that happens. Uh, and then uh, the great news is that Jefferson Union High School District is uh, occupying their workforce housing currently. People are moving in. And so while it seems like a long road ahead, uh, they are making huge progress and they're going to have a uh, an open house on the 13th. Is it the 13th? Friday right the 13th. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be very happy to celebrate with them. All right. Um, just let's go straight to this. District goals. Uh, District value is the goals provided in our local control of, uh, LC, LCAP and strategic plan. All of our district board agenda items are tied to these goals. One or more goals are listed in the description of each board agenda item. The details for each of these district goals can be access, accessed on the PacificaSD.org website. So, resolution 2022-04-27-A, Day of the Teacher and Teacher Appreciation Week and Resolution 2 uh, 2022-4-27-D, Classified School Employee Week. Action is needed. I am happy to present two resolutions tonight. Um, one is recognizing May 1st through 7th as National Teacher Appreciation Week, May 3rd as National Day of the Teacher, and May 11th as California Day of the Teacher. And the second resolution, recognizing May 15th through the 21st, as classified employee week. It is with pleasure that these resolutions are brought to the board for approval in acknowledgement of the many important contributions made by the teachers, certificated employees, and classified school employees of the Pacifica School District on behalf of all our students and families. We do have two resolutions, and if we can share in the reading of them. We will start with Day of the Teacher and Appreciation Week. Um, I can start and then we can go around. All right. Resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Pacific School District, County of San Mateo, State of California, that whereas the Pacifica School District Board of Trustees acknowledges and appreciates that teachers and certificated employees have worked harder than ever to adjust to returning to in-person class and supporting our students in recouping and accelerating learning during unprecedented and challenging times and whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes the tireless dedication of our teachers and certificated employees who prepare outstanding lessons, collaborate with colleagues, assess student work, provide feedback to our students, and provide our students with encouragement, support, and care they need to thrive and Whereas, the Board of Trustees recognizes today's teachers nurture the academic, social, emotional, and physical development of students, preparing the workforce of the future, and... Whereas, the Board of Trustees acknowledges good teaching grows in value and pays dividends far beyond the classroom. Whereas, the Board of Trustees appreciates our teachers and all certi certificated employees who strive to create a learning community that facilitates each student's academic and social emotional growth. Whereas May 1st through May 7th, 2022, has been designated National Teacher Appreciation Week, with May 3rd, 2022, proclaimed as National Day of the Teacher, and May 11th, 2022, as California Day of the Teacher. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Pacifica School District proudly proclaims its appreciation for the outstanding job performed each and every day by the teachers and certificated employees of the district, who, through their gift of teaching, enrich the lives of all their students. Regularly passed and adopted this 27th day of April 2022. We have the second resolution, Classified School Employee Week, resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Pacifica School District, County of San Mateo, State of California, that... Whereas the education of youth is essential to the future of our community, state, country, and world, and... Whereas classified employees are the backbone of our public education system, and... Whereas classified employees work directly with students, educators, parents, volunteers, business partners, and community members, and... Whereas classified employees support the smooth operation of offices, the safety and maintenance of buildings and property, and the safe transportation, healthy nutrition, and direct instruction of students, and... Whereas our community depends upon and trusts classified employees to serve students, and... Whereas classified employees with their diverse talents and true dedication nurture students through their school years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Pacifica School District hereby recognizes and honors the contribution of the classified school employees to quality education in the state of California and in the Pacifica School District and declares the week of May 15th through 21st, 2022 as Classified School Employee Week in the Pacifica School District. <clears throat> Regularly passed and adopted on this 27th day of April 2022. Uh, so we do actually have to pass it. So. <laughs> are, are, are there any questions? <laughs> no questions? Uh, would someone like to make a motion? I'll motion to approve the, um, the th resolutions for the Classified um, School Employee Week and Day of the Teacher and Appreciation Week. I'll second. I'll second. Uh, Barbara, will you take the vote? First. Trustee Bredahl? I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> All in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you. Motion passes 4-0. Um, while we're on that topic, is that uh, for uh, we have uh, PSD logo wear for staff members, and um, so we would ask your help in terms of uh, uh, working with the cabinet member at your assigned school. And so if you would uh, be in touch with them, ideally it would be before school or after school. Um, Kai and I often meet at 11 o'clock, and I think that's close enough to the lunch hour that we want to be able to hand people a little bag with the logo wear and thank them personally for that. So we would love to have you join us. All right. Um... Next is the appointment of the Measure O Independent Oversight Committee members. Um, this is the action item, and Speaker Josie. Thank you. Um, tonight, I'm happy to present some um, uh, some applications to be on the uh, Measure O Bond Oversight Committee. Just kind of want to review um, what what that is. So, when we passed the 55 million dollar bond, one of the um, in, for education code, you should have a citizens oversight committee. And so what does that oversight committee do? The oversight committee informs the public concerning the district's expenditures of the Measure O bond proceeds. They review expenditure reports produced by the district to ensure that the Measure O bond proceeds were expended only for the purpose set forth in the measure. And they present to the board in a public session an annual written report outlining their activities and conclusions regarding the expenditure of the Measure O bond proceeds. So um, there is a composition of, of the committee. You have um, at least one member from an active business organization, one member from an active senior citizens organization, one member from an active bona fide taxpayers organization, and then you can also have members from the various schools. So um, I'm really happy to report to you tonight that um, if the board takes action, we will have almost a full committee. It is very difficult to find somebody from a bona fide taxpayers organization. Um, many school districts don't don't have that seat filled, and um, the senior committee, senior citizens. I have reached out to the Pacifica Senior Center um, several times and have not yet um, gotten anybody to volunteer. But I will continue to do that. 
So tonight, what, I, what I'd like to present, um, kind of review who the previous appointments were. That's on the second page. Um, we did have two resignations of the committee, and that's one because Linda um, was appointed a board of trustees, so she resigned. And then the other person, Dylan Paul, he actually moved out of the area. So we have Dennis Schillenberg, the business representative. Amy Swanson is the Valley Mar um, representative. And Betsy Landrum is Sunset Rich. Uh, tonight's applications, and I did uh, attach them, and, and they were attached to the board agenda. There was one revision that was posted, I think, a day or two ago, um, just a typo that was corrected. So uh, following are the applications for tonight's consideration. We have David Todd, a business representative, Chelsea DeBara, an IBL representative, Mary Trenor, Ortega representative, Jesse Levin, Cabrillo representative, and Patricia Balmos, Ocean Shore representative. So um, all of the applications are attached. I also did attach, um, you know, the previous presentation from the San Mateo County Council outlining what the roles and responsibilities of the committee are. So I'm happy to answer any questions or just open it up for the board's discussion tonight. Are there any questions? Okay. Um, do we have... A uh, motion to go ahead and appoint the presented candidates as additional members to the Measure O Independent Oversight Committee. I'll motion to approve the candidates for Measure O. Second. second uh, Barbara, will you take a vote? All in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Motion passes 4 0. <clears throat> All right. Our next item is working group on priorities and funding update. Any uh, We were <coughs> scheduled for a meeting on the 26th of April. There was a meeting right before spring break. It became very clear that we were not ready for this next one, uh, that some more work needed to be done uh, for preparation. Uh, Josie has a meeting with Mr. Levinson on Friday morning to help catch us up. Uh, I will join them if my schedule permits, but... Uh, so we have had uh, a number of meetings, uh, and the work is around crafting and clarifying a message around our, our district priorities. Uh, I think one of the things that's coming around from this is uh, uh, developing a group of advocates uh, through clear messaging and uh, being able to understand why Pacifica School District's uh, revenues are lower and what that means. And so... Uh, one of the, an example of that would be we're a thousand dollars, we get a thousand dollars less per student than the next closest school district in San Mateo County. Well, some people think, oh, it's, it's only a thousand dollars, but a thousand dollars times three thousand students is three million dollars. That's 30 teachers, or it's 20 teachers and 10 counselors, but that's really substantial. And so, Trying to understand that in a way that uh, both our staff and our parents can become advocates is is not an easy thing to do. I, I will admit, I think we're struggling with it a, with a, it a bit, and uh, being able to develop an urgency around that is, uh, yes, we know that is true. How can we show that this is affecting our students or impacting our classrooms? And so uh, we're still working on crafting that message um, overall. When we look at priorities, things that do continue to bubble up are uh, staff salaries uh, and our salaries being lower than uh, surrounding school districts. Uh, mental health, uh, prioritizing mental health support, meaning uh, school counselors, uh, as well as uh, uh, developing support for students who struggle. So, um, so we have the meeting on April 12th. We postponed the meeting on uh, April 26th. We have uh, one more meeting scheduled for, uh, I think it's May 17th, but we will have one more meeting. We just have to figure out how to fit it in between all of the other parts. Right now. So, are there any questions about the working group? Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Once all the meetings are completed, how are we going to deliver what the results are? Yep. Yeah. Um, so I think ultimately the, uh, what we had uh, initially intended is that there would be uh, a group of recommendations that would come to you in terms of uh, district funding priorities. 
knowing that it was out probably outside of the LCAP cycle, just more longer term kind of priorities. I'm not certain that we'll square away on all of those priorities at this point. Um, we are, are coming to that information, but it's not crystal clear. And I'll give you the example is that, uh, you know, sometimes when you do this work, uh, often uh, communities will say, this is the program that we love, that we have to keep, that we, and we're just not settling on any one thing. There's, you know, it's, things are okay. Uh, things aren't terrible. So I don't, it's more in development than I think we had thought it would be at this, at this process. Um, but I do think that we would um, at least know our next steps. I think there's probably some future work that needs to be done. And it's uh, really around the communication. Uh, California school finance continues to be very, very challenging. You know, right now, uh, uh, we're community funded. We will flip back and forth. And that's going to continue to be a challenge. We have to be able to articulate why that's going to be a challenge. And I think uh, part of getting that messaging out is making sure that I can say it, <laughs> that Josie can say it, that all the principals can say it, that all of our board members can say that. And I think crafting that message is really important. And we're working through that. I, I can't tell you, just knowing that there's seven weeks of school left, and a TK plan, and a, a expanded learning opportunity, like, we're really getting into the point where the ability to do all of this hard work at one time is, is just pushing up against the, the, uh, the margins or the amount of time to do it. So I hope by the end of this year, we will have something to bring to you, like, here's what we can say we accomplished now, and this would be the next set of work that we have to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, so would that mean we would still need to hire um, the consultant to help us do that? Uh, to carry I, over? Yeah, I don't, I don't know at this point. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think we're going to be done with that work, but maybe there's, maybe there's continued work with him, maybe there's work with someone else. Um, yeah, it just seems like there's a lot of time and energy going into it. There sure is. So we would want to continue until it's crafted and finished. Yeah. Maybe you have something? Yeah, I mean, I, I think just to go off of my previous comment around the financial pressures at the statewide level, I think this district in particular faces um, significant financial pressures. Um, Mostly because the system of funding that's set up by the state, as Josie has articulated multiple times in the past, is set up to, if you have a lot of local property taxes, that funds you in the basic aid model. And if you don't, and you're a district of a high number of unduplicated pupils, you get funding for that. And we kind of sit in this middle zone where we don't get the extra funding on, on the high needs end, and we don't get the extra funding because of the local property tax, and so we're in this very difficult crunch, um, so I think the work is really important that we help our community understand that, because um, that dynamic is not likely going to change in the near future. It might be helpful um, for, like, this is just thinking ahead, for the beginning of the year when um, we're having back to school nights and the PTOs are presenting, you know, their budgets for the year maybe having a presenter there explaining the work that was done. Right. Um, I, I think one of the things that, uh, as we talk about this, is that I thought a foregone path would be looking at a parcel text and just knowing uh, different things of the economy and a potential recession and uh, other kinds of things. I'm not completely certain what we're saying is that's not absolutely a certain path right now. It may be as other people get to understand it more deeply. Uh, right now, I don't think that there's enough um, knowledge of, of our particularly challenging financial situation. And I think, like you said, helping other people understand that is going to be important. Thank you. And I would also encourage uh, the community to go to eddata.org where you can see Pacifica's 
financials as well as um, enrollment and student achievement and all of that compared to the state. And you can see it across every line item. Um, I think it's, it's a publicly available resource and I think it's a really helpful resource for everybody to take a look at. All right. Um, let's see what we've got here. Approval to hire a vice principal for guidance in the learning at Sunset Bay. Um, the action item, and Carla. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve the Pacific School District to hire a vice principal of guidance and learning at Sunset Ridge School. Pacific School District sees the need to hire a vice principal at Sunset Ridge to support a systematic multi-tier system of support approach in addressing academic, behavioral, and social emotion instruction and interventions. The Vice Principal of Guidance and Learning at Sunset Ridge would be accountable for improving student achievement and positive social emotional development for all students. The Vice Principal of Guidance and Learning may be assigned to work a special schedule of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and or additional days to oversee after school expanded learning student programs that may be held at the school site. The position would be funded using LCFF supplemental funds and expanded learning opportunity program funding. This is a certificated management position that would be paid at the vice principal salary rate and worked 194 days during the 22-23 school year. If there is a need for leadership and supervision for the expanded learning opportunity program, there would be up to 11 additional days compensated at the per diem rate. Approximate salary range would be between 109,000, $109, $339,000 to $128,815,000. Um, with an additional um, approximate um, retirement and health benefits um, ranging from twenty one to twenty five thousand for a total compensation package of one hundred and thirty one thousand to one hundred and fifty four thousand. Okay. Are there any questions? I'm just uh, wondering how we determine that we need a vice principal at Sunset Ridge compared to the other schools. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the most obvious is around uh, uh, student progress as we return from the pandemic. Uh, many students at Sunset Ridge are making great progress. However, uh, if I look at the number of unduplicated students, uh, Sunset Ridge has approximately 179 unduplicated students. That's in, in many cases twice what uh, other schools have. Uh, many of those schools were um, more negatively impacted. Uh, many of those students were uh, are not recovering uh, from the pandemic uh, as quickly as students at other schools. So. Uh, when we look at uh, data points in terms of things like chronic absenteeism, uh, student behavior, uh, as well as uh, academic uh, progress, uh, we're finding that there's need for more support at Sunset Ridge. And so this is an example of uh, using district funds uh, to um, uh, support a, a, a need and uh, in terms of student equity. So do you think it'll be like a short term, like one to three years, or just um, wait and see? I, I think it, it's certainly not uh, in terms of one of the uh, uh, delays in getting this started is that you don't want to do this for one year uh, because if it's really um, doing the deep work of uh, being in the classroom, supporting instruction, helping uh, coach teachers with instruction or uh, behavioral supports for kids. It's not something that would be well served in just one year. So uh, I worked hard to uh, make sure that we would be able to fund that uh, for up to three years, but I would say this as, as a long-term need if we look at uh, the student population in, at Sunset Ridge as it currently is. That's a good question. So I did. I was uh, reluctant to make a short-term mm -hmm. appointment because this is long-term work, and uh, to do the deep work, we want to make sure that uh, that that continues on for several years. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the Pacifica School District to hire 
uh, Vice Principal of Guidance and Learning at Sunset Ridge. I'll make a motion to approve to hire Vice Principal for Guidance and Learning at Sunset Ridge. One second. Okay. Arco, will you take our vote? And yes, all in favor, please raise your hand. <coughs> Motion passes 4 0. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Next, we've got approval to hire a response to instruction and intervention teacher. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve Pacific Coast School District to hire a response to instruction and intervention teacher for the school year 2022-2023 at Sunset Ridge School. A job description for the new position of a response to instruction and intervention teacher was developed and a draft was shared with LSEA on April 13, 2022 for consultation. Pacifica School District sees a need to hire um, an RTI square teacher at Sunset Ridge School. Under the direction of the site principal, the RTI square teacher may coordinate and schedule English language arts and or mathematics interventions for students, communicate which interventions are needed and used for the direct instruction, work collaboratively with teachers and paraprofessionals, train staff on the use of research-based interventions, model lessons for teachers, serve as a coach, monitor student progress, and deliver targeted instruction during the intervention to identify students based on data. This is a certificated position that would be on a teacher salary schedule and a teacher work schedule. This position would be funded using the site-based LCFF supplemental funds. Approximate salary costs would be between $54,363 and $90,543 with an additional um, retirement and health benefit cost between $13,000 to $22,000 for a total approximate compensation package range of Sixty-seven nine hundred fifty-three thousand to one hundred thirteen one hundred seventy thousand. All right. Are there any questions? I just also want to point out that uh, this funding source is uh, through site-based LCFF supplemental fund. So each school receives eight hundred dollars per unduplicated student that they have. Sunset Ridge has the largest number of unduplicated students, approximately 179. Uh, and so uh, that generates enough money to have a full-time intervention teacher. Uh, I've actually had a few, a few people ask, could we have that at our school? And uh, at Sunset Ridge having the most number of unduplicated students, but $800 per student is enough to make a difference in terms of an actual intervention. And so other schools could use that their supplemental money. They may not have enough money for a full-time teacher, but that would be something that they could use as well. Any questions? Yeah, I, I know this is um, it's not like a case load uh, type of role necessarily, but um, it would seem given the number of uh, unduplicated students at Sunset Ridge that the, the, the potential number of students that this role is uh, supporting is quite high. So, like, uh, the two questions that I have is, is is one enough? Are there additional supports needed um, for those students? Uh, and then two, I'd be curious as this role comes on board, what we're learning as the most effective strategies for intervention and support. Um, it's always great to have more people uh, supporting students, but really understanding what works and. Um, what works most effectively, I think, is, is important as we hire new roles like this. Um, just to answer your question is, are there additional supports needed? I think there are. Uh, one of the uh, changes that was made uh, when we were not seeing the progress in student uh, success was looking at all of the students having an individual um, uh, individual personal personalized uh, instructional package for both language arts and math, and uh, they are using that. I think they're seeing some uh, some progress with that, so that's one piece. Um, is it enough? We don't know, but I think between having a vice principal and having the uh, RTI teacher, that would be a good first start, and then looking uh, at uh, putting those in place and then looking next year what, what supports will be needed. Maybe, and I think a part of the job description here that will really make an impact 
is the coaching and the modeling with all teachers, because all teachers are responsible to do response to instruction and intervention. So having one person solely focused on that will help all staff. And then if they do deliver targeted interventions, it would be for the highest, neediest students. Um, and then I think she, the intervention specialist or um, teacher would help looking at the data and support teachers in analyzing and making groups. Um, I think that would help a lot. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right, uh, do I have a motion to approve the, the school district to hire a response to instruction and intervention teacher at Sunset Ridge? Motion to hire a response to instruction and intervention teacher at Sunset Ridge. All right. All second. Okay. And Barbara, would you take the vote? Yes. Uh, all in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 4 0. All right. Another one. Um, approval to hire an administrator of special projects and approval of job description. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees approve Pacifica School District to hire an administrator of special projects for the school year 2022-2023. A new job description for the position of an administrator of special projects was developed to address specific needs for the Pacifica School District for the development and implementation of district plans and programs during 22-23 school year. This will be a one-year position for the 22-23 school year only. Pacifica School District sees a need to hire an administrator of special projects. Under the direction of the superintendent or her designee, the administrator of special projects will support district initiatives across district departments. This position would be funded using primarily one-time funds for planning for transitional kindergarten and expanded learning opportunity program funding. This is a certificated management position that would be paid at the school principal salary rate and work 205 days during the 22-23 school year. And there is additional information regarding approximate salary and benefits. Wait, are there any questions? Um, given that this is a time-bound uh, position, I'm curious if it makes sense to have um, like in a contractor role, there's usually deliverables or here's what's expected during this time frame um, versus a set of duties. I wonder if it makes sense to have and here's what's expected in that time frame. Not so comprehensive, understanding that special projects is by definition a little vague so that um, it can do a lot of different things. But if there are specific activities like launch the transitional kindergarten, you know, things like that that um, yeah, I, I actually thought a lot about that and uh, in terms of writing the job description and wanting to be specific enough about kind of the scope of those things, that how much public community uh, interaction would be needed. But quite frankly, uh, at, with uh, seven weeks of school left in a very limited number of, I don't quite know. and. Uh, I do know, as I write the TK plan for the upcoming years, it will be planning to plan. And part of planning to plan is around spaces. In this district, it's where are their classrooms. So we know that we have Sunset Ridge and Ortega. It's also time now to have some TK classes at some of the K-8 schools. And that comes down to where is their room, how do we make spaces. Uh, you'll see in the uh, upcoming presentation on the work that's happening this summer and the construction. Again, that comes down to spaces. So I, I, it's actually easier to be more vague than to be more specific, which just indicates how desperately we need one more person to help us define those things. So I, I actually thought a lot about that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, do I have a motion to approve the hiring of administrator of special project, projects and the related job description? I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Barbara, will you take your vote? Yes, all in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 4-0. Thank you. All right, 
Measure bond, oh, bond update, summer work information from Joseph. Okay, thank you. Um, and we do have the presentation up on, on the board. Now, um, if you can just move it to the, to the first. Any yes, uh, thank you. We might, so uh, Elizabeth can't see it. Uh, <laughs> that spot. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it up there too, so okay. Okay. just give me a second here. So um, we have heard from CC a few times this year as far as the measure of bond update um, in totality. What we're looking at now is really just the summer work, um, what we're going to be doing over this coming summer. I'm just going to give you a, a moment for her. Oh, good. She can see it. We can move forward. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's move forward. So, Measure O, uh, Future Forward Updating Pacifica School District, and I love this picture of our, of our little preschoolers. It really shows you why we're here and, and what the goal is for this summer, is really to enhance the learning experience for our students. Do I have to move forward? Uh, the facilities master plan is a living document. Um, it, it does meet the changing needs of our students, and we're doing this this summer to have safe facilities con conducive to student learning. So what we're going to go through now is um, a summary of what we're doing this summer by school site. We're going to talk about what we're doing to the building, what we're doing to the, the site grounds, and there is a lot going on. So um, going through each slide, um, rather than reading the projects, we've kind of highlighted one project per, per site that, that we feel is, is important this summer. And they're all important, but, but just kind of to highlight different ones per school. So at Cabrillo, we are replacing um, the carpet with that new rubber flooring in the A, B, and C wings, and that's, that's going to be a huge improvement for us um, coming back in, in, the, in the fall to, to a clean classroom, easy to clean floors. Um, we're really excited about, about that project going forward. Can you go ahead and move, move along? Please stop me if you, if you feel like I'm going too fast. It's just there's a lot. Uh, I don't want to just read the slides to you. Um, at, at outside at the summary of site work at Cabrillo, we're going to be doing the outdoor improvements at the daycare portables. You know we need, we've needed a lot of work in the daycare portables at Cabrillo. So we're going to be clearing the site, grading, paving, some new fencing and gates, um, new service gates to the existing fence. So, and if you look at Cabrillo, um, those two lists, there's a lot going on at, at Cabrillo this summer. Um, and we're, we're looking at um, also possibly having spin drift on campus. So we have a lot. We're excited about all that work, and it is a lot. We can go ahead and move forward. Ingrid B. Lacey is one of the schools where we probably have the least amount of work this summer. Um, but one of the highlights here is the, the admin office improvement. It's the first thing you see when you, when you come up to the school site. So remodeling that space for the parents and community as they enter the new foyer. Um, they're going to have a new door buzz in the system and new storefront windows. I'm sure you've seen the front of the school and the rust and the windows. So that is one of, one of the um, biggest impact improvements that we wanted to highlight for Ingrid B. Lacey um, at the site work. There's going to be some existing concrete sidewalk modification. Again, when you drive up to the front of the school, we really need to upgrade that passenger loading zone. And so that's going to be another really good improvement for that site. Uh, Ocean Shore um, is another school that doesn't have a huge amount of work, um, like Cabrillo, but um, there is work going on, um, it, and the existing kiln room upgrade is, is one of the areas that um, I think is really exciting for the staff and students to have that, that upgrade. It, it's been a long time coming for that site. And then at the site work, we're going to have, um, finally, the installation of the new playground equipment and safety servicing. And we're going to have that sandbox removed. If you've been there, you've seen that um, sandbox that when the water comes in, it was, it was, that was really bad. But we're going to have some really nice uh, synthetic turf, turf installed in its place. And then Ortega, um, we wanted to highlight just you know the single stall restrooms in the existing classrooms, B12, B14, and uh, C26. You can see there's a lot of um, some duplicate work from the other sites, but a lot of other work also going on at, at Ortega School this summer. And then uh, go on to the site work. This is a big one that I know we've had a lot of discussion about for a couple years now, so we're really happy that we're going to have the parking lot ADA improvements, including the new concrete stairs. So that's really going to enhance the access um, for parents coming up that, that area way and being able to have that ADA access. 
Sunset Ridge, um, another school that has quite a bit of work going on this summer. Um, we wanted to highlight the remodel of the two hallway spaces in two rooms and um, remodel one hallway space in two rooms with a single stall restroom and a pool out room. And then site work, another um, big modification that has been um, difficult over the years is the parking lot at Sunset Ridge. So having that ADA improvement and that some parking area modifications and the new concrete ramp from the street sidewalk to the school is a huge improvement for that school site um, coming in the mornings and going in the afternoons. And then Valleymar, um, the roof replacement, you've heard about um, some issues with the Valleymar roof, so having that ABC wing and the library roof um, redone this summer and the art room F wing, those roof repairs along with the covered walkway is going to be another big enhancement for us. And it's perfect timing because we didn't have the issue of the Valdemar Library mold, and so having the roof redone this summer is um, it's at perfect timing for that. And then uh, site work, we didn't really hi highlight anything for Valdemar because um, Valdemar, in addition to the summer, we're going to have some fall work going on, and so we just wanted to list those things for you because there's there's really no end in the, in the summer work at Valleymar because of the portable classrooms that are going to be set up um, and the entire D wing is going to be vacated um, and Cece's going to put some temporary classrooms up. And you can see the dates there um, for planning. Um, it starts in January 2023. So we're going to have um, constant work at, at Valleymar, summer through fall. And then should we kind of just listed the Valleymar construction schedule here so you can see the various um, dates. CC is very detailed. And, um, this is a huge project management. So we have all the dates listed there when the contractor uh, mobilizes at the site, when the deeming is complete, um, and the final completion date of August 2023, and then um, final work uh, completion in September 2023. And then technology, um, just a quick summary. The technology is ongoing, but um, of course during the summer we have a lot of um, work going on with technology as well. We did have that original request for proposal for the network infrastructure, and so the cabling will be completed this summer. Um, some outdoor, the AP installation at all sites will occur this summer, the security cameras, um, and our domain upgrade. And all of this work is also being coordinated with um, CeCe's work and our um, summer cleaning work as well, which we'll get into as we go on a little bit. So you can go on. So moving, I, I think um, Dr. Olson has sent out some updates. Um, we do have professional movers who are going to come and pack and move items. Um, staff responsibilities will include unpacking um, the, the boxes after all of the construction is complete and the classrooms are ready. And we do want to um, provide support um, for the, we're going to have district office support on hand. It's going to be a very busy summer. Um, we're uh, going to provide professional development will be asynchronous so teachers will have more time in their classrooms. And there will be up to five hours of extra time for unpacking. Um, it is a, a big task that we're taking on, so we want to provide as much support as possible for the staff during this time. So district-wide summary, there is work being done at six school sites. And, um, it's an extremely tight construction schedule. Um, and as you saw, some of the work will continue into the fall. We are asking for the cooperation of all the school site teaching staff. Um, we're looking for flexibility from people as much as possible. Custodial staff may be asked to move around a little bit if there's if there's no areas of their school that they can clean at a time, then we might ask them to help at another school. Um, they they might have to just clean the areas where the construction workers are not working on. It's it's gonna be challenging, but um, you know, we're 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 happy that our custodial staff are going to be flexible. We'll offer overtime as needed and, and try to get in some extra subs, maybe bringing in a cleaning company to assist um, at the end. If we if we can't if we feel like we're really up against a deadline, so we are looking at um, some creative ways to prepare. Now we're looking at how can we help people, um, you know, be prepared for the packing and the moving. Maybe bringing in some some bins so people can start going through outdated items um, and just provide assistance to staff in removal and disposal disposal of items. So we really want to be here to support um, the staff. It's going to be a, a big lift for everybody. 
and um, you know the district office staff are also willing to to go out and help as much as possible. So any questions? I know that was a lot of information <laughs> in a short amount of time, but we just wanted to share how much work is being done this summer at all all the school sites. Are there any questions? <laughs> uh, you know, the, thank you. I mean, I liked how you broke it down. Um, the only thing that pops out to me is the five hours of um, support for packing and or for unpacking. I'm just wondering if that's enough time. I'm just thinking of how much work it is to move and then unpack, and it's a lot. So I'm just wondering if you know that's enough time for. Um, or additional time and funding to help them. Yeah. I, I think uh, one of the things that is challenging to do is you can't make a solution for everyone in every situation. There may be a handful of people that need more support than others. And so uh, I think if we, if we start now and start to think about uh, thinning out some of those items, uh, so that not everything necessarily needs to go into a box and needs to get unpacked. That's one thing. Anything that can go in the teaching wall uh, doesn't need to be moved to a storage container. So that's kind of the other piece to that. Um, the five hours is in addition to the Monday and the Tuesday. So it's not just five hours. It's, you know, depending on the little bit of asynchronous uh, professional development, but, you know, there probably should be a good 10 to 12 hours uh, between Monday and Tuesday of work days that people would have in their classrooms. So the other part that uh, we've, we've talked about just a little bit is that we also have to get past, and I will send something to parents, to recognize that the start of the school year is not going to be the perfect start. You know, we've, we've now gotten through the pandemic and we realize that you can have school on the computer and then you can have school at school and then you come back to school and it looks like a, a bunch of different things. But the perfect classroom setup, um, you know, someone said, what happens if it's not ready? And what I, will, what I know across six sites is there will be something that's not done or not, not ready. And people say, what's the plan for that? Well, we have to find out what we need. Like, what, what, what don't we have? What do we need to do? How do we make those adjustments? And we would work with staff to, you know, make those adjustments as needed. So I think at this point, I feel comfortable with five hours. Not everybody's going to need the five hours. Uh, some people won't need that. Um, but I think to, to do more than that without really recognizing what that need is, doesn't seem like that would be prudent either. It's really around unpacking the boxes uh, and getting the materials out there. So I, I wouldn't, in most cases, see that as being much more than five hours beyond the two additional days that people will have in the classroom. Any other questions? Yeah, I have, uh, so just a couple of acknowledgements. This is an incredible amount of work, uh, Josie, with you and CC and uh, Great organization takes a lot of planning and detailed work, so so kudos to putting it all together in a quick time frame um, to get it done this summer. Uh, so so great, and I know that the teachers, as expressed um, today during the board meeting, are under a lot of pressure to support the upgrades that are happening. Um, so a, a couple of questions that I have is one. Are there opportunities to leverage like volunteer organizations or something just to provide extra support? I know when I was a teacher at San Francisco, a bunch of Salesforce employees came in and they helped make my boards and things like that, which was just good to have um, volunteer help um, if that's possible. And then the, the second question is, is around the contingency planning, if and likely when um, there are things that don't finish exactly on schedule and on time, is, is there a way that we can articulate when we would be making the call that if the contingency plan is virtual learning, and when when would we make that call? Would it be, you know, a week before? You know, just so people have a sense of, you know. So virtual learning is can't be part of our contingency oh, plan okay. at this point. That's not a legal uh, school day valid version of that. Um, 
uh, who knows what the what the need will be. Um, as I said uh, in a meeting with uh, some teachers the other day, is uh, if ever we stand a chance of having things go mostly well with CC's planning, I am confident that they will. But I also have done this enough that I know that something will not go well. Um, and so, you know, from the scope of sometimes uh, districts have delayed the start of school, that's one piece. That would be pretty, uh, you know, we'd have to be recognized that a whole school isn't ready or something that would be very large that we would delay the start of school. That's, you know, certainly something that we would negotiate and other pieces. I think what's much more likely is that one or two or three, you know, a handful of rooms won't be ready, and then how could we make plans around that? That would probably be a more likely possibility. So you can play with days and time, or you can move around with spaces. And so what's kind of an interesting thing about this is that every school's a little bit different in terms of what it needs. Like Ocean Shore was mostly done, mostly remodeled with new flooring as a result of their flood their outside is going to be inaccessible. So it just really depends on, on what is the shortage. And uh, But I think, you know, we're hoping and planning for things to go very well. Um, but I think I also don't want to discount. Uh, this is coming at a time that no one has any extra anything, right? You just don't have anything left to give where everyone is still depleted. This is such a hard time. So we, we want to acknowledge that and, you know, recognize that this is teachers, this is principals, this is us, this is board members. We are at the end of this in terms of having anything to give. Um, so I wish that it wasn't at this time, but it's important to use these nine weeks that we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, um, Ortega with the work on the parking lot, is that going to include um, dealing with that tree roof that's not, I mean, so many cars on the exit? To, I know you're talking about the ADA spot yeah. parking spaces. I will check on the, that. When you, when you exit the school, yeah, I know you can tree. bottom out the, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, know, I know exactly <laughs> what tree roof you're talking about. I think most, about. most of the parents with, with a low wheel basis probably okay. know that tree very well. I will confirm that. <laughs> Because I'm assuming those trees would have to be, the roots would have to be cut and everything, so it's a, not a small job. No, it's not. But let me, let me but I, it'd be a shame to fix all that up there and then have that on the I need the tree root. Okay. <laughs> good, that's a good point. <laughs> and I, I uh, if everybody's ready, um, I have two things. One, I was just curious where the, the portable classrooms are and then the storage at Valmar. Where, where's the plan to put all those classrooms uh, while viewing? So I can get the maps for you. I have pictures. It's 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 behind the the D building. The so D building. mainly on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. It, it'll be, yeah. And then in the storage also. I think the storage is also up there. Okay. But I know that the portable classrooms will be placed back there. Okay, because I know there's a lot of interest in that. She that is so area. you would not believe the maps that I have. That she is so <laughs> detailed. We have a list of everything. Uh, that was a very summarized summary of what I put up there. I but I have very detailed um, <coughs> with maps that I could share with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Color coded maps. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and then my other thing is because we just passed resolution about uh, teacher appreciation month um, a week that you know this might be a good time for PTOs and parents to reach out to their teachers and say hey <laughs> I hear you have a lot of moving to do between now and the end of the month can I come in here and somehow help you um, I think it would be appreciated and uh, it's just a nice easy way to kind of you know kind of piggyback on what we were talking over here just getting extra hands in there um, so I just Think that might be great. So if anyone's listening, that might be reach out to their teachers and see what they need. Um, all right. So can I just build on that? Yes. I think that uh, just in this time of stress, that I think about uh, how to make a plan that that works for people is I think we just have to keep asking, how can we help? Like, what can we do to help? Is that's that's the piece? Is that there's no easy answer for something that helps everyone? But I think as a 
stack of appreciation gift, that, that's a great idea. How can you help? Right. Um, okay, so I guess we're moving on to the facilities, maintenance, and operations update uh, okay. information. Thank you. Um, yes, and I wanted to just give you an update on what our um, FMO department really is and, and what they do. So um, go ahead and move forward. So uh, just an introduction to our maintenance and operations staff and what their responsibilities are. Um, they assist with our day-to-day -day repair and upkeep of our facilities. Um, there's eight sites, and that equates to about 103 acres of property that they oversee. So um, we do have a, a work order system called School Dude. It's an electronic system. And just so you know how it works, the principal will enter a work order, and it's assigned by the administrator, and then it's received by a maintenance staff. And they all have their uh, Chromebooks, and this, this software also works on your cell phone. Um, and then once the work is complete, they can, they can mark it, and they can close off the work order. And the, the principal can see in the work order system the status, so if they, if they submit a work order and it's not completed right away, there's actual journal notes that the, the worker can type in and say, oh, you know, I'm waiting for this part to arrive, and there's kind of like updates that you can put in the system. And we do have uh, work order reports that we review weekly. Um, we have weekly maintenance meetings, and that's a time when they can ask for help with their work orders and kind of talk about what, what parts are missing and where they are with, with different um, projects. And we are working on getting some additional training for the, for the work order system. Um, it is a new piece of technology um, in the last couple of years, and so we want to do um, ongoing training with them on how that system works. And then facilities maintenance, the categories of facilities maintenance and operations, just kind of an overview. We have routine maintenance, um, which you see through the work order system, and fire life safety is always the uh, priority. When a principal puts in a, a safety work order, that is highlighted as a, a high priority and, and moved up to the top. We have preventative maintenance. Um, examples of that would be like replacement of items at, at scheduled intervals. The most um, important thing this last year was the MERV 13 filters. We put it on a three to four month replacement cycle, and so that would be um, an example of preventative maintenance. And then the work orders is the daily, daily requests by school sites. Operations is really your custodians, your site custodians, and all the supplies that, that go into them getting their work done. And then the other category that we don't talk about very much is deferred maintenance. Um, it's a weird name, deferred maintenance, because it sounds like you're just putting something off, but um, Really what it, what it was initially set up by the state was to fund um, projects, and the state used to require school districts to make a five-year deferred maintenance plan. And when they, um, as part of that, the state would fund $120,000 to the Civica. It was a different amount for different school districts, but our amount was $120,000. And then we were required to match that amount and put another $120,000. It's in a separate fund called a deferred maintenance fund. And the five-year plan would consist of things like, in year one, um, you know, we need to paint Valley Mar School. In year two, the asphalt needs to be done at Cabrillo. So it was a very detailed plan by school site, and it was submitted to uh, the California Department of Education, I think it's OPSC, the Office of Public Construction. So that plan is no longer required. It went away with the LCFF um, funding because then the state said, we're no longer doing this, it's really up to you now, it's local control. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the presentation. Um, the last category is our facilities master plan, Measure O. Um, not really going to get into that in this presentation because that's a whole separate presentation that we've discussed. So we can go ahead and move forward. So annual maintenance, just so you can have an idea of what, what is the annual cost of our maintenance department and grounds department. It's about a million, million dollars. Um, we have five maintenance workers, two groundskeepers, and then um, this department also pays for 80% of the director and the assistant, and 20% of the project manager. And the reason we split up the, the management and, and assistant is so that they can be flexible and work on the bond 20% and on the maintenance, and also that we can have CC's expertise on the um, maintenance side as well, not just 100% of her is charged to bond. It covers the vehicle costs, supplies, all of the personal protective um, gear, the tools, phone stipends, and software. It also covers the services and repairs. You've seen a lot of pest control services, um, a lot of windows, fencing um, that, that breaks down, and kitchen equipment is about 80,000. And then the contracted services, things that um, are, we do not have the expertise, such as uh, 
tree cutting, electrical work, some plumbing, and asphalt. So those contracted services are about 142,000. This year we're over budget by approximately 100,000, and, and I'll get into a little bit of that in the presentation. Some of that is really um, things that would have prior been classified as deferred maintenance. And since we haven't designated a separate fund for that, it kind of falls into this category. We can go ahead and move forward. So examples of routine maintenance, I kind of mentioned the MER 13 filters. Um, Science Labs is another one you probably aren't aware of. We have a company come in every year and do annual inspections of all the Science Labs and clean out um, the inventory and chemicals annually. The kitchen equipment service is something that needs to be done annually as well. And the fire inspections, I think we've, we've talked a little bit about that um, as we've gotten reports in. We can go ahead and move forward. Um, some projects that were completed this year, um, we, we, we did a lot of HVAC repairs, inspections and repairs. We had a contractor come in at all school sites um, during COVID to ensure that all of our systems were working. Fortunately, we were able to use COVID funding for that. Uh, tree maintenance is something that just comes up, you know, you see Pacifica, all the trees, the storms, the tree roots, all of those things. We spent $50,000 this year on tree maintenance out of the maintenance budget. The grounds contracts comes up here and there, like we do tick abatement, um, things like that, and that was $20,000. We're looking at um, continuing some contracting services right now because we're short-staffed. Fencing is just constant, the fencing repairs. Um, you know, people cut the fences, they break down. We spent $50,000 on that. District-wide plumbing, um, that's another area. This excludes the Cabrillo um, project, which is on another slide, and we just com um, completed it this, this past week. And then pest abatement um, varies, but this year it's $30,000. The IBL track and the Ocean Shore Field, fortunately, were funded with COVID funding. Go ahead and move forward. So the projects in process um, is the Valley Mar Library Moisture Control. We completed the, um, all of the work, the remediation work over spring break. Now we're holding off until the roof is repaired to, to completely finish that job. But the library is open and functioning. We just need to have that roof repaired over the summer. The Cabrillo sewer system was completed last week. Unfortunately, they found another issue while they were out there. And it wasn't just $60,000. It's, it's pushing closer to $90,000. But it is completed. But it's something that the pipes were how many years old? And these new, um, these new pipes are going to last he said 100 years. So I hope we never have to talk about the Cabrillo. We, if you remember, we did have to actually put up um, water stations. And um, we had major problems with Cabrillo these past two years with the plumbing. And then place, place structure repairs. We did complete the Sunset Ridge fencing last week. That was 14000 We still have some other work to be done, um, the cost to be determined. And then you can go ahead and go forward. Um, this was just kind of a, a thank you to our team so you can see some of the work when they're out there doing their work. Um, of course, you guys know Carlos. He's here in the district office, um, always helping us out. And Bob is on the top left, Bill. And then uh, George is over there on the right, mowing the uh, odds <laughs> death field for our workforce housing. So um, we want to thank them. This is a good time to really recognize all the work that our maintenance um, and grounds department custodians do. Um, just kind of a summary here. Um, the, the district exceeds the 3% require, requirement for routine maintenance, so the state requires that we take 3% of our LCFF funds and put it into this budget every year, and we have exceeded that, um, so we are sufficiently funding it. The district does lack funds in deferred maintenance, and those are the costs that I was kind of mentioning to you, is we are putting aside 120 or have 240000 in the fund. We've been putting 40000 and we've been going over. And when we close the books this year, you're going to see um, how much we went over because you really should account for those expenditures in the proper category in the deferred maintenance fund, you know, just for proper record keeping. So some considerations, um, you know, is plans for deferred maintenance um, and how can we anticipate and plan for funding increases for the deferred maintenance fund. And then just kind of move forward. I have one more slide, Will. One of the things um, you know, to think about is developing a deferred maintenance plan. And you know, how do you de develop a deferred maintenance plan? It requires proper planning, um, a dedicated strategy. Some of the work you've seen Cece do is, is this type of planning, but hers has been more focused on our facility master plan. 
But um, you know, you would have to start with what's the condition of your facility, which we did in developing the facility master plan. There is a benchmark there, but you would need to update that with a current audit of the facilities and then kind of prioritize based on what assets you have and what the useful lives are. Um, you know, think about funding sources and then create a multi-year plan um, based on what funding sources you have and, and what kind of um, repairs you, you think you're going to have to make in the next five years and then update the plan annually. So these, these costs we're talking about are things that are not covered by the facilities master plan. Um, these are the things that you saw the projects that have come up um, unanticipated. But some of those things you can plan for knowing what the life, life cycle is of some of the assets. So that's just kind of a um, quick update on um, what they do and, and what we've done this year and some of the projects. And, and I think that's, that's pretty much it. I think the next slide is just for questions and discussion. Question? Uh, I'm just wondering how the tick <laughs> situation is going. I just know um, almost every time we bring the dog in, she's carrying a tick with her. Yes. And then, so I'm just wondering how it's looking out there on our fields. It's, it's, it's not as good as it could be right now, but when the um, San Mateo Vector Control came out, I think it was about a month ago. February. February. Okay, so it's been a couple months. The report was good. In, in, and they had some areas that they reported could, could have been you know, cleaned up a little bit more, and they have pictures of those areas. But quite honestly, since we haven't had a grounds crew, a consistent grounds crew, it is, you can see it when you look out the window. It is overgrown, and we do need to get on top of that. I haven't had um, any principals or, or parents calling about ticks, but I myself have experienced the same thing you're experiencing, you know, off of school grounds. Mm -hmm. So it's it's throughout Pacifica, but we do need to do more work in our schools. We have to get the contractors out there and get that done. Yeah, I was kind of wondering when the last time was, because I briefly remember when we talked about it. So February, yeah. March, April. The report was good, but uh, it's, it's, the t it's high tick season now, so we need to keep up on it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, the only thing, comment I want to make, again, this sort of goes to your uh, work you're already working with on the task force, mm -hmm. is that just a reminder that also we're at a disadvantage because we live next to the ocean. So this price is going to be higher than any other, like a district over, you know, on the other side of the bay or farther inland. So it's again, it's like one of these things where Pacifica's <laughs> working against itself to try, just try to keep up. Um, and uh, so anyway, I just kind of wanted to highlight that, that <laughs> as much as we keep trying to put money in this, it's really hard when the, the, count, the state doesn't give us enough to really deal with our marine climate. Mm -hmm. so, um, so anyway, I just wanted to make that comment about that. All right. Is there any other questions or comments? Great. Thank you, Josie. Thank you. Oh, looks like you're up on an action item next. <laughs> so approval of a pool of movers to provide moving services for six school sites. Okay. This goes along with the um, summer presentation we just presented to you and all the work we're doing. We did um, receive three proposals um, for the moving company. and. Um, what CC would like to do is have a pool of movers. She has checked the references and all of her due diligence, but in order to have more flexibility to complete our projects on time, she wants to utilize this pool of movers um, in order to manage the, the different moves accordingly. So tonight she's asking that you approve the three, um, the Crown, Puma, and Waters, and that she would be the person to orchestrate how much she uses of each company as she moves forward. Um, I just want to real quick. Do you know if it's hourly or how are these? How are we charged by the movers? Do you know? Well, she had very detailed proposals, and these were the um, amounts based on the the bid packet that she put out. Um, I don't know if it's hourly, but I could find out from her. I, I guess I'm just wondering if somehow a, a whole bunch of volunteers showed up in the next month, and then the need for the movers became less. Is there any back end move on that? You know, yeah, we're going to do I think that. for the um, like for the big things, you know, I think the volunteers are good for helping like 
you know, dispose of things, obsolete things, and, and maybe help organize things for classrooms, but for the big furniture and everything, we really want professional movers. We're going to take um, photographs and, and really, you know, keep track of everything. So um, I, I think that she will be able to utilize them, and like, of course, keep the cost down as much as possible with what we can eliminate before they come. Um, but yeah, I think we want to definitely use the professionals as much as possible for the big things. And then I can find out the exact pricing for you right. based on what she comes up with. I think what the volunteers can do is help alleviate the stress of the, of the staff members in terms of preparing. That would be the relief, the actual moving. Up. So there would be cargo containers set up outside uh, toward the perimeter of the schools. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I don't know that we would have huge reductions, but I would be curious to know how CC would be able to structure that um, a, a pool of movers and, and where, how that would be funded. That that would be my. Yeah, question. I think my question is: these responses seem to be in response to the full scope of work. Mm -hmm. So if you're utilizing a pool, they wouldn't each be doing the full scope of work, right? You'd be using some for a little, some for another little. Um, and so I guess I'm not clear on what the amount is. That we yeah, she, she would have to assign specific jobs to specific uh, movers. Um, and, and then the follow-up question is, uh, this is just a question on like public contract code. I know, you know, school districts are supposed to pick the lowest um, uh, bidder. Is that, is a pool something that's allowed in public contract code, I assume so, but just double checking. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure she spoke to county council about this, but I can get back to you on that. Um, she she did do the request for proposal, you know, she followed right. all of right. those um, guidelines. I know there's some resolution where you have to pick based on exactly. your responsibility. Yeah. So that, I think those would be good to confirm and then just the amount that we're looking at. Since we're not picking waters or Puma, are we talking about around 210, around 204, for the, to get yeah. the full work done? I'm pretty sure these are the amounts based on the exact thing that she needs done, and she has already determined that Crown is going to do Ocean Shore and, and Valley Mar, and Puma is going to do these specific things. But I can confirm that with her. Oh, so is this? This is exactly what she has. This is the pool. So this is this is what she would have. So it's nine thousand plus fifty-two thousand plus two ten plus two oh four. I I'm gonna confirm that okay. because it's not exactly one hundred percent clear. Okay. So I do apologize for that. But what I would suggest then, maybe if the board feels comfortable, is to um, because of the timeline of uh, her communicating with these um, bidders, is to approve the pool of movers, and then we can come back with the exact amounts so that she can communicate and start scheduling the moves, if the board felt comfortable with that. Yeah, because it's an action item. Right. So we need to right. make some decision. Um, if we put a cap on it to the 210-908, is that going to get in the way? Not at all. I think what, what we're asking the board is to approve a pool of movers to provide the moving services, and then she would make the determinations on exactly what she needs. And then you could say up to that amount, and then we would um, we would report back to you on the exact amounts. Okay. And then the only thing I think we would want to verify is that this was legally uh, a mm -hmm. that we met all of the contract requirements in terms of doing that. So it sounds like it would be kind of a two-stage process is that what we would be asking the board for is approval up to uh, $211,000. And to use a pool of movers if it's if, and if, if county council has approved it. Correct. That would enable her to um, plan for the summer mm -hmm. and get the schedules going so we don't have delays. Can you make contingent uh, votes like that? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say in the worst case scenario, they find out that that wasn't the right public contract compliance, but we voted 
for it's okay. So so if if it's not legal, we will come we we will avoid that part and come back to you on, on that end. That's that's kind of our obligation is to make sure that it's legal and we won't move forward if it's not. Yeah, I think we're asking the board to authorize staff to enter into contract with a pool of movers um, once she is able to ensure to ensure timely completion. She would discuss in detail with the movers their manpower and work plan, taking into consideration prices, and then she would assign the pool to the sites accordingly. And I do apologize for this. It's kind of it was done at the last minute, but because of this timeliness of getting all those projects done, if we waited until May 19th we wouldn't be able to move forward. So if, if we do mess up uh, in that, in terms of it not being legal, we may need to ask you all to come by and have a special meeting very quickly uh, to make it legal. All right, are there any other questions? Okay, do I have a motion to approve the pool of movers? Um, <laughs> described in the attached memorandum. Motion to approve um, the pool of the movers to provide continued services. Okay. Right. Do I have a second? I have a second contingent on uh, finding the final uh, amount uh, as well as uh, compliance with public contract. Thank you. All right. And Barbara, could you take our vote? Uh, yes. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 4 0. All right, so resolution, resolution number 2022-04-27-C, authorizing filing of an application for the California Preschool Transitional Kindergarten and Full Day Kindergarten Facility Grant Program for the Pacifica School District. This is the action item. Thank you. This is, so this is um, some funding that is available for us. Um, we've worked with King Consulting, and I was working with them finalizing the application um, today because the application is due on, on uh, April 30th. And so this would enable some additional funding for the three schools that we've um, designated, Valley Mar, um, Cabrillo, and Sunset Ridge, Ortega, Valley Mar, and Sunset Ridge. And um, we're putting the applications in, and then if we get the funding, we can finalize um, the rooms and what kind of um, an, an upgrades we could make for the TK program. And so um, we have prepare this resolution asking the board to approve that tonight so that we can obtain additional funding to move forward with our transitional kindergarten program. All right. Are there any questions? Okay. Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution 2022-04-27-C? I'll make the motion to approve. What's that? <coughs> Um, can I have a vote? Uh, Motion passes 4-0. Thank you. Okay. Board bylaws, board policy, and administrative regulations. Update and new policies to address new Title IX regulations. First reading. Uh, Dr. Chavez, for us. All right. It is recommended that the board of that the board approve changes to existing policies and adopt new policies to address the new Title IX regulations. Below is a list of the updated and new policies that address the new Title IX regulations. I won't read them all, but you will see that there is a reason for each update and for also each of the new policies and administrative regulations. But some background: on May 6, 2020. After a lengthy notice and comment process, the U.S. Department of Education released new Title IX regulations as they relate to complaints of sexual harassment. Schools are required to comply with these new regulations as of August 14, 2020. So we're catching up right now. Title IX applies to education programs or activities that receive federal financial assistance and specifically prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex, including sexual harassment. Until, until now, there have been no binding federal regulations related to sexual harassment under Title IX. Only administrative guidance issued by the, um, by the DOE's Office of Civil Rights. The final regulations dramatically expand the requirements for Title IX grievance procedures, which will require, require significant policy and procedure revisions, training, and time to implement. 
Um, and we also attach redline versions of the policies needing changes and the new policies to be adopted for your review. All right, this is just information. Are there any questions on this? All right, we made it. Future <laughs> agenda items. So, so the Title IX policies, uh, unless there are any questions that come up during the weeks, we will uh, put those on uh, for consent and move through those. Uh, future agenda items, uh, you have next week off, but then <laughs> after that, it's one meeting per week. So. Uh, so the board work study uh, with LCAP in the budget, uh, those will be at 6 p.m. Um, we will provide, uh, we've uh, worked with Peninsula uh, 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 Pacific Coast TV so that they could be broadcast uh, so that people could watch them from their home. Uh, the only public comment that would be available would be at the beginning. Uh, and it has to be specifically about LCAP or the topic that is uh, on the agenda. But, but for both the board work study on May 11th and then on May 25th is when school services will be, uh, I think they'll be with us virtually, but there's a good chance that uh, they could be with us in person around uh, the results of the special education study from school services. And again, we'll broadcast that on this television. May 18th is a regularly scheduled board meeting. We're going to start closed session at 5 o'clock uh, on that one. Uh, giving us uh, a good 90 minutes. Um, and then uh, on June 1st is the regular board meeting and the public hearing for both the budget and the LCAP. Um, uh, and then uh, finally on June 15th, there is a regular rescheduled board meeting. There is a board meeting scheduled in July, and um, typically by mid-June, we do often cancel it. We are going to watch that carefully with the amount of construction that's going on, just in case we do, we do need that. I think it's on July 20th. Uh, and if anybody's out of town, we can uh, virtual, virtual you in on that one. I don't expect that we would need it, but uh, there's enough happening this summer that uh, there could be a need for a work. Are there any questions or additions you'd like to make to this? This is this is this is what we're all dealing with right now is just the overwhelming amount of tasks that are going on. But we will get there. I do have a question. Um, how caught up are we on the policies since we didn't really have time to review for two years? Yep. Uh, so I think uh, between the recent the recent uh, uh, name changes and things, we I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how many it is. Barbara will uh, help us count on that. But we got probably 15 taken care of on that one. And then this one was really important, the Title IX, because it's legal. And so that's where we're going to focus on, the ones that are about complaint procedures or legal things. We're going to kind of prioritize those pieces. We didn't, we, we scratched the surface this year. So um, I don't know that now's the right time to make that decision, but we may want to uh, think about, let me think about that one a little bit. There is a possibility that we could just say, let's work with CSBA and do them all at once um, and start fresh. Um, you know, that's, there's so many things like that, so that's that's a good question. We we did not get accomplished this year what I thought would be accomplished. I, I actually applaud Dr. Torres for taking this one on at a time that uh, if we hadn't had last week, I don't know that we would have been ready for all of this. So thank you. We had a very 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 busy time. And we did receive them um, before we usually do. We had a lot of time to review. Oh, thank you. For that. And I appreciate that. Vacation yeah. helps. Right. <laughs> and what, what was the date of the 5 o'clock meeting? The 5 o'clock meeting on May 18th, if you could start that at 5. And uh, But that's a regular scheduled board meeting. And then the, the work study should be uh, 6 to 8. And uh, um, I'm trying to think about how to set up the room for that. All right. Anything else? Okay. All right. Adjourn the meeting at 8.52.